More than that, of course, it's a great national institution. It has its own ethos, its own personality, and amateurism. Taking part as players or officials or supporters, simply for the sheer love of the games, that's been a core central value. Now, undoubtedly, it's been affected by the growing use of commercial sponsorship. It's now directly challenged. The star players demand, and indeed they've negotiated their own deals. In this report by Helen Cannon, the players speak, and President Sean McKay responds publicly for the very first time. Huge one up towards DJ Carey. Always good for the goal. He's got another. DJ Carey. Helen, he's not a genius. When DJ Carey flies in from Birmingham tomorrow, it is likely to be to a press conference announcing his involvement in the sponsorship deal agreed last week by the Gaelic Players Association. The GPA was set up barely a year ago, with Donal O'Neill as its frontman. Likened to a renegade trade union, it is not recognised by the GAA. If they are found to have broken regulations, and the players who have joined in the sponsorship deal have broken regulations, will you be suspending them? Well, that's a hypothetical situation. Now, we obviously uh, we don't operate in a hypothetical, uh, hypothetical situation that some player next Sunday might get sent off and what might we do. Anything that arises, we would examine it in the code evidence and the proof that we can provide. And obviously, we, all, we uh, consider everybody in, this, in our association, as we do in this society, as being innocent until proven guilty. And I think it would serve no purpose to answer a hypothetical question to review a hypothetical situation that may not arise. Obviously, we're having a professional person there to act as seeking out endorsement for our players, I would like to think that with dialogue, with more can be solved through dialogue than by threatening suspension or threatening. I, for one, I have met with the GPA. I have met with the, the, the agent who operates on our behalf, and as far as I'm concerned, my door should open for further dialogue. I don't think it's necessary to be confrontational. I don't think it's necessary to be within the sticks. But has the GPA sold these star players short? I would place a far higher premium on our membership and I would hope that uh, when we do announce deals that it will be seen that the individual will benefit more and his team colleagues will benefit more than, than is alleged have, that happened in uh, last week. Do you see independent sponsorship as maybe a drift towards professionalism and a drift away from the amateur status of the GAA? Well, I would say that I would have to be concerned when an amateur sports person in any code uh, seeks the services of an agent that it could be the beginning of a slippery slope. And obviously, I am committed totally to the preservation of our amateur status. That is, I'm totally opposed to pay for play. Uh, and I would dearly like to think that this isn't the start because obviously that would bring us to a level that the associations we know for the last 120 years would be totally different. I think that if GEA players were playing the game for money, they, they wouldn't be playing GEA, they'd be uh, trying their hand at something else. Uh, you know, from my own point of view, it certainly wouldn't interfere with, uh, with the games. And at the end of the day, um, these deals have nothing to do with playing hurling football, it's, it's uh, outside of the GA. It's an amateur organisation, it's an amateur game. Uh, I don't have a contract with the GA, so uh, I don't see why I shouldn't be able to do what I want to do in my spare time. So, is this the first step towards professionalism? Players felt uh, that the structures Cook Park had put down for commercial representation were somewhat unfair. Um, and we're saying to Cook Park, we don't think it's fair that you monopolise the representation of players. They've lost faith in their ability to, to, to uh, you know, make, make their presence felt when these decisions are being taken. And perhaps last week was slightly aggressive, but I think it's put it on the table that the players are prepared to stand up for their rights. They, they really look as if they're looking for conflict on this one. This is the point, you see, and this is where I think that the GA are very worried about it, that if they, if they relent on this one, the GA will say, well, what next would the GPA look for? Will they look for money for players for playing in championship games and this is the, this is the difficulty i think that they feel that they don't really have any reason to exist without conflict they will deny that but so far uh, there is certainly an element of uh, conflict about most of the things the gpa have, and the manner in which they've done them and i think the mistake the ga have made in this one is that they haven't really let the players at it themselves and let uh, said right we, we will stop this, the pay for play that can never happen other than that off they go do the best deals they can because they really, I don't think they can stop it in the end, and I think there will be a lot of deals done under the counter, and even with or without the GPA, a lot of players will do their own arrangements and have their own arrangements anyway. As far as I'm concerned, people are being advised on what they should be doing, and as I said earlier, I think it's, you have to question when an amateur sports person sees or seeks the, the services of an agent. I believe that other codes have shown that that is the dangerous road to take.
people have this fixation with, with, with professional sportsmen not really loving their sport, but that's completely untrue. I think uh, no, matter, no matter how much money you're going to get paid or, or whether the sport is amateur or professional, you play the sport because you love it. But any team that gets uh, far in, in the All-Ireland Championship really deserves to, to reap some rewards because it's such a difficult competition to win. I think that the winners should have uh, get something extra out of the competition and if that comes in, in some sort of financial payment, well, so be it. I think that's, that's only fair. But he's elitist, absolutely, and uh, it, will get, it will get worse. And in fact, I think some of the players even who maybe have been identified in, uh, with, uh, with, the la with the GPA in the last uh, few months, I mean, we don't know what, what the future holds for them. They may be superfluous requirements on county teams come next championship. And I wonder, will uh, the sponsors want to know about them then? Of course it's elitist, and that the GPA have denied that, but if, uh, all you've got to do is just look, look at the reality of it. There, there are no Carlo Connor backs, as I say, and uh, being uh, uh, turning up for an, uh, to announce sponsorship deals. The way it's worked is that it, it has always been elitist. I mean, bad players have never been looked after by county boards. Um, it's always been the players that, that county boards need. Um, as, as well as that, if you came from a county which was successful and you had a certain personality, there was always material gains to be had from being a high-profile GA player, if you had the neck or the ability to go out and open a pub or open a shop, you, you, you benefited from your name and, and your celebrity as a GA player. Now, GA people have always accepted that and they've always supported people who are, in a sense, benefiting from their involvement with the GA. Now, what the GPA did last week was put that on a more formal footing. Um, after years of players receiving benefit in kind, on a kind of an ad hoc basis depending on your personality and your geographical location in the country. This was something that was concrete, it was black and white, it was there for everyone to see. This is the deal, these are the players who are benefiting. Would you have signed up for the deal if it had been around when you were playing? I would have and um, I have no doubt that all the people I played with and anyone I spoke to since, they all would have too, you know. Ginny Allen is the only footballer to win an FAI Cup medal and an All-Ireland GAA medal. He was also on the Cork Harling team that won the Munster final in 1975. I can remember playing GA since the 70s, I suppose we were always kind of satisfied with playing the games, but at the end of the day, you're always, if there's something floating around you, you're kind of looking for it. It's just a natural tendency of human nature to, to try and get something. And knowing all my friends and players, like uh, going back to the 70s, we got, we, we got boots uh, sponsored by Adidas, which was one of, we were one of the first ones, you know, and at that stage it was even uh, frowned upon that we were getting uh, free boots for playing in the county, you know, so like, it's just a fact of life at this stage that, you know, the players will look for something and the people maybe in Italy don't want it, you know, and that, that's an ongoing thing going on since I can remember, which is 25, 30 years ago, you know. I think the problem is reason because they've just ignored them. They're, I think they've treated them like outcasts. Um, and I've not been on, totally on the side of the players, I think, but I think it's, it's developed into a situation now of us and them. Well, I think you have to appreciate, I mean, the GE is very big business these days, and uh, they've got some very capable people, and they're acting as professionals, and the GE couldn't operate without them, so I don't think the players begrudge them. Um, I think the issue is that the GA has moved on in leaps and bounds because of these people who, who are obviously professionals within the structures of the association. However, the players have been somewhat left behind. You only have to go back 10 years uh, when we really didn't even have sponsors and to where we are today. And I would suggest that you'll see a dissemination of, of, of rights uh, through digital television, local and regional broadcasts. Um, you know, that will lead to increased revenues yet again. I think we'll be paying to see GA within five years' time. Um, and it's just slightly unfair that if a player can go out and break a leg and be £5,000 out of pocket and have to fight to get most of that back, that's wrong. And I think that's what the players' grievances, uh, that's where their grievances really lie. What do you think the GA will do now? And do you actually expect to be suspended or anything? Um, I'm not sure how, how they will respond, but uh, I think it would be crazy if, if it um, ended up with any suspensions. Um, I think it would be very unfair. I don't think any player would deserve that. Um, you know, from my own point of view, you know, I've, I've played in the county hurling football for nearly 10 years and. Uh, I don't think that um, I deserve suspension. I will wait and see, and I won't pass judgment. I will be surprised if the deals that, that our marketing agents bring to fruition, I will be surprised if they don't show that there's much more for the individual and for the panel arising from the sponsorships that we would hope to get. The irony is this, the GA has got to act very professionally in relation to what is an amateur issue. If they started even thinking of suspending players, it would be absolutely crazy because 
you would have uproar, you'd have uh, players threatening strike the whole lot. They've got to uh, look at the rules and regulations very carefully, try and tiptoe around them and play along with the, with the, uh, the GPA in some degree, at the same time making, it, making the GPA almost redundant by looking after the players better. Uh, and that really is the way forward. The GPA would have, have no future, have no function, if in fact the GA looked after their own players properly. As a democratic, non-profit making organisation that ploughs all its finances back into the association, uh, we have a, you know, I can give you, I will give you today, a, a copy of all our accounts. So you can see, we don't gain, nobody gains personally from it, and consequently, we're up front of where our money goes. We honestly feel that we should treat our players better financially through endorsements, where we have appointed uh, professional companies to do that, and uh, I believe that it's important that we manage that to the, for, the better, for the betterment of all our players uh, within the, the various panels and indeed with, for the benefit of the association generally. So, does the GPA deal represent the end of the glory days of the Gaelic Games? In fairness, like, there's no, there's no family life, there's no social life, and they should get some reward. They're not getting how the GA, they might as well look after themselves. I wouldn't see it becoming their main income, but people who are now devoting literally most of their leisure time to playing for their counties are going to see something back for that, and it'll make that decision easier. Considering that the GA makes so much and they are doing well out of the, uh, the game financially, I think the players, considering the amount of training they put into it, deserve some bit out of the game. So from that point of view, I, I think they deserve uh, financial remuneration. I think that's what most players want. Just a, 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 a reasonable amount to, to cover them for their expenses. I totally disagree with him. Do you? Yes. Why? I think it's an amateur game and we should play for the love of the game and if materialism should be going out of the GA, we should play the game for the love of it. If I wanted to play football, and just because I'm no good at it, why should I benefit from it? If you're the better you are, the more money you should get out of it. Like Ray Keane is doing it, all the soccer players are doing it, and they're getting big money. Like The GA players are getting nothing. That report by Helen Callaghan, and thank you for your company on tonight's edition of Prime Time. We'll be with you. Oh, but uh, thankfully, we just we we, we did a little bit of steel anyway to get get up the field and, and get the equalizer, you know. But uh, it's, it was a 70-minute game. You keep